Welcome to the Gift Fit Guys, quick and dirty tips to slim down and shape up. My name is Ben Greenfield, and I'm the Get Fit Guy. Now, when it comes to achieving peak physical performance or pushing yourself to the extreme limits of endurance exhaustion, what do you think is the most important part of your physiology? Your muscles? Your heart? your lungs? Well, the surprising answer is none of the above. The ultimate arbiter of fatigue is actually situated right between your ears. That's right, it's your brain. And in this two-part series, you're going to discover how to trick your brain into giving your body a better workout, how to override fatigue and get tired less quickly, and how to get into the zone. The concept of the brain being the central cause of fatigue is actually a theory I first encountered when I interviewed a guy named Dr. Tim Noakes in my podcast over at bengreenfieldfitness.com. The title of that episode is How You Can Use the Central Governor to Tap into Your Muscle's Hidden Potential. Now, in that episode, Dr. Noakes explains how being tired can all be in your mind and that you can actually trick your body into exercising for a longer period of time, going harder, or lifting heavier if you distract it with techniques like counting repetitions, making it to a small intermediate goal like the next telephone pole, listening to music, engaging in self-talk, or even using mental visualization exercises before your big workout or race. Now, what Dr. Noakes calls the central governor model of fatigue is based off the fact that if your brain or your heart runs out of oxygen or experiences sustained periods of what's called hypoxia or low oxygen, then you could die or undergo permanent damage to these organs. So your brain, also known as your central governor, is wired to limit how hard, how heavy, or how long you can go by reducing your recruitment of muscle fibers. And this reduced recruitment of muscle fibers causes you to feel fatigued. So your brain simply says stop and your body obeys. Now, it's possible that fatigue goes beyond simply oxygen, and it could also be based on the amount of fatty acids, also known as ketones, or trace amounts of glucose, sugar, available to your vital organs. So you can think of the central governor model as a kind of survival mechanism in which your brain makes a conscious effort to limit energy expenditure in order to save fuel for other precious organs like your heart, your lungs, and your brain. Interestingly, fatigue can be compounded if you're distracted by other details, such as problem-solving, complexity of an exercise or movement, or distracting thoughts about work, family, or life. Now, this is also something that's been studied. Dr. Samuel Marcor, who's a UK sports scientist, believes that because of this type of decision-making fatigue, fatigue can be a perception of your mind just as much as a physiological state, like lack of oxygen to your heart or your brain. Now, he bases this on the fact that there's an area in your brain called the anterior cingulate cortex. And yes, I promise that's the biggest word I'll throw around in today's episode. That's the area responsible for the control of your heart rate and your breathing. But it's also responsible for making complex decisions, paying attention to detail, and doing things like figuring out if you're supposed to be using your right leg or your left leg, interpreting a financial spreadsheet, or not getting distracted by commotion going on around you. In other words, the more you're requiring your brain to do at any given time, the faster it's going to fatigue, regardless of how fit your muscles, lungs, or heart are. Dr. Mercor argues that this kind of physical fatigue is a matter of conflict resolution. It's just a struggle between the part of your brain that wants you to quit and the part that wants you to keep going. And the more decision-making fatigue you're subjected to during exercise, the faster you're going to physically fail. Now, this belief that fatigue is more a state of mind than an actual physiological state makes perfect sense when you watch runners who seem to be on the brink of complete physical breakdown suddenly shift gears and go into an all-out sprint for the last 200 to 300 yards of a 5K race. They look like they couldn't run another step just a few moments before, and suddenly they're zooming forward with renewed energy. Now, a brand new study on cyclists adds even more credence to the idea that your brain is ultimately responsible for fatigue. In this study, Brazilian sports scientists use a non-invasive form of brain stimulation called transcranial direct current stimulation to apply a tiny electrical current to the cortex in your brain. 
Now remember, that cortex is the primary culprit when it comes to exercise fatigue. The idea was that this electrical stimulation would briefly interrupt the way that neurons in the cortex communicate with each other and distract the brain from shutting down the body. Of course, there was also a control group of cyclists that had the electrodes attached but didn't get any stimulation. So what were the results of this brain tweaking? Well, after 20 minutes of real versus fake brain stimulation, the cyclist completed an all-out ride to exhaustion. And sure enough, the cyclists who underwent the electrical stimulation had significantly lower heart rates, lower perceived exertion, and a 4% higher power output, which may not sound like much, but is actually huge for a cyclist. The researchers noted that this increased performance could go above and beyond a mere distraction of the brain, but could actually be caused by a mingling of pleasure and pain centers in the brain. This is because the right side of your cortex is strongly linked to feelings of pain and physical exertion, while the left side of your cortex is linked to pleasant feelings and emotions that occur when you see someone smile or you hear your favorite song or you cuddle up with a loved one, things you normally wouldn't think about during exercise. Well, interestingly, this feeling of pleasure or happiness in the presence of physical exertion is very similar to what your brain feels when you're in what's called the zone. In psychology, being in the zone is a mental state of operation in which you are fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement, and enjoyment. When an athlete reaches the zone during physical performance, they often achieve their personal best while describing their performance as effortless. And the zone is not just some airy-fairy state. In sports performance laboratories, alpha brainwave production of 8 to 12 hertz has been shown to correlate with these zone-like states of relaxed alertness. Ultimately, the final takeaway message from Dr. Noakes, Dr. Marcora, and those crazy Brazilian cyclist electrocuting scientists is this. If your brain is healthy enough to optimally process information and communicate with your body and trained enough to resist getting distracted, then you're not only going to perform better, but you're also going to equip your brain to achieve that level of effortless performance called the zone. So, Let's say you want to override your central governor, distract your brain, enter the coveted zone, and push your body and mind beyond what you've ever imagined possible. And let's say you want to do it without wearing a giant cap full of electrodes and undergoing mild shock therapy treatment. Is this possible? Yes. And in part two of this series, I'm going to tell you exactly how. Now, in the meantime, if you have more questions about how to trick your brain into giving your body a better workout, then post your questions over at facebook.com slash getfitguy. And until next time, I'm the Get Fit Guy asking you, what are you waiting for? Go get fit. Get fit.